So after the video I did on a complete build of our Sunset Ridge cabin, I got a lot of questions concerning the cost. How much did it cost to build? So let's take a look at that right now. So I thought I'd kind of go through it step by step, you know, as we built, which kind of makes sense. Some of these things you got to take with a grain of salt. You know, this is the uh, late 22, early 23 season. Things are kind of volatile. Price is up and down now more than ever. But, you know, depending on when you're watching this video, uh, these may or may not be accurate numbers, but it should give you a pretty good feel on what it would cost to do a project like this yourself. Now, when we bought this lot, we bought four and a half acres. It adjoins our other 83 acre property next door. Uh, and it kind of sits like I call it a gargoyle at the entrance. So you can sort of look up and see it as you go into the main cabin. Uh, it was abandoned. The woman who lived there had passed away. Uh, in order to get a hold of uh, the, the owners at the time, uh, I finally resorted to leaving a note on a piece of two by eight, leaning it up against the door with my phone number they called, I was able to purchase it. So four and a half acres with a small cabin on it uh, was $35,000. Uh, the cabin's really dilapidated, uh, hadn't been taken care of for years. Uh, there was trash everywhere. Um, but what I really liked, aside from this kind of completing the set and being a good purchase for a little buffer uh, for our main cabin, is there is room for at least one more, if not uh, two or three more sites uh, for cabins on the property so i was excited about that but we decided we would go ahead and remodel the existing house uh, to suit our needs it was definitely due for an update uh, had a lot of interior products being used on the exterior um, so we wanted to correct all that and here's what we did first thing we needed to do was clean the place up. So I had uh, a guy that had done some work for me on the first cabin, he's an excavator. He was able to come in with his dump truck and clean up a lot of the garbage uh, with his skid steer, get rid of it all, haul it away for me. He regraded around the outside. There was like carpet under the grass. I think some things to try and control erosion. Uh, he cut in behind the cabin, got it to drain properly, kept the water out of the foundation, which was good. And uh, we learned the hard way, it's good to have a proper driveway, proper driveway, uh, in before you get started. It's on a hill. Uh, the first cabin, we just had a heck of a time. So I had him haul some rock in, spread it on the driveway after the loggers had been there, they kind of wrecked it and it wasn't much to begin with. Made it easy for us to get trucks and trailers right up to the house from day one. Big change from the first cabin. So I paid him fifteen hundred dollars uh, for his work around the cabin disposal fees and stone for the driveway as soon as uh, we got it all cleaned up around there we brought the dump trailer in and we started doing demo work on I guess the interior and the exterior so we demoed two room additions off the side uh, I think they were supposed to be room additions they kind of get left as decks so we had OSB sheeting and drywall on the outside of the house we tore all of that off. We also took all the siding off and the exterior sheeting. Um, we pulled the roof off, everything, not necessarily in this order. Got us a clean slate. All the floor on the interior came out. Uh, there wasn't a lot that we saved. Some of the main structure, I guess. Um, and because we were putting in new windows and doors, we wanted to reframe everything from the beginning. So demolition, $700 in labor, and I have $500 for nine or ten huge dump trailer loads to begin with. These are 12 yard dumpsters, pretty big one. Once the demo work was done, uh, we brought some lumber with us, had some delivered, uh, and we were framing. Uh, we reframed all of the interior walls brand new. We were able to save the roof trusses and roof sheeting. The exterior walls, we reframed all the window and door openings and replaced the sheeting all the way around. So I would say it was about half the studs, all of the headers are brand new, um, and quite a bit about all the sheeting around the outside. Uh, we put an Advantech floor in the cabin, much more stable, seals it up really well. Um, all of the framing, I guess, that we did, we were uh, $1,500 in material, then about $2,400 in labor. I'm trying to list the labor separately because I did take people uh, and pay them to help me. Maybe give you a better feel if you were going to do it all yourself. Uh, windows and doors, I have $4,800 for the exterior doors and windows, $300 in labor. Uh, we kind of tie it, put the doors and windows as we did the framing. It all kind of happened together. 
And then we moved to the exterior framing, the deck. So we used treated material for the post, beams, decking, deck framing, the joist hangers, concrete for the piers, all of that on the deck uh, was about $5,000 in material. Uh, I went with my guys and we framed the deck. Uh, Tully came back with uh, some of his guys and they were able to put the covered roof on the portions that are covered and finish all the railings and posts. Uh, that's included in the $5,000, uh, sorry, $5,200 labor number. Uh, but we were able to use lumber that we milled ourselves from logs off the property. Uh, so I had no money into the lumber uh, for the railings and whatnot. We did put like a treated two by eight cap, uh, like top rail, so that the stuff underneath doesn't, don't have water sitting on non-treated lumber. We'll see how long it lasts, but uh, the price was right anyways. So we went inside after that. Uh, my brother did most of the electrical rough. I helped him. I uh, had to do some of it while we put the ceiling in and, and trimmed it off myself. So about $800 in labor for his help and about $1,200 in material. Um, roof, same thing, about $800 in labor. I put $1,200 in material. I own a roofing company. We use mostly leftovers. I had to buy a little metal for the uh, front porch uh, covered sections, but that's about what I got into that. I think that'd be a decent number if you were going to you know, buy roofing at Lowe's or something like that. Uh, plumbing rough, I roughed the plumbing with my father. Uh, didn't have any labor costs associated uh, with the plumbing rough, but I did have about $500 in material. Also, I had to buy a water system. Uh, I call it the water line coming into the house is very low pressure and low volumes just kind of falls out the end of the pipe so we put a hundred gallon tank with a float valve the line comes in the top fills that hundred gallons off uh, this is in the crawl space and then on the concrete floor i mounted a jet pump with a little bladder on it that's what pressurizes the system but it works off that hundred gallon tank as soon as someone's done using the water uh, slowly that water line replenishes it so that reminds me, uh, we did put a concrete floor in a crawl space. That was about $1,500 worth of concrete and labor together. Kind of hard to separate it out there. And then the HVAC. So I had a full on uh, air handler with duct system. It's got an electric coil in it for some, I don't know, preliminary heat or when you don't need a lot. Uh, we also had uh, heat pump put outside that does air conditioning as well. It's a Honeywell unit. I subbed that out 100% at a cost of 11,000. As soon as all the rough was done, it was time for insulation. So we used an open cell spray foam. I'm a big fan. Uh, closed cell even better, much more expensive. Uh, we did a hot roof, which means we insulated the underside of the roof decking. Uh, there were some mold concerns up there that encapsulated it all. Same thing down the walls. Uh, well, that was all new sheeting, filled the walls up. Uh, and then we did a closed cell because it's exposed in the crawl space. We did the rim joist then about one inch around the inside of all the blocks to make sure it's sealed up from the creepy crawlies. I think that stuff even adds some structure. If I haven't said it before, it really uh, seals up and, and firms up an old house. Uh, I think that was money well spent. If you were doing one yourself and you were trying to do it on, on the cheap, uh, fiberglass bats uh, are fine insulation. They've done houses that way for hundreds of years. Uh, well, 800 years maybe. But fraction of the price, probably 500 bucks to do the whole cabin that way. Uh, so let's see, drywall comes next. Uh, I had met some guys in Kentucky that hang and tape drywall. So. Uh, it's a miserable job. I hate doing it. I've only got uh, Mike who is skilled in it so the rest of us will carry sheets and watch him work. Uh, it was great to have that done when we weren't there. They did a nice job. They were also able to prime and paint all the walls for us and tile the shower. So when we came back, uh, that was a lot of stuff out of the way. I paid about $2,200 for the drywall paint, uh, labor to hang and tape and paint, and that includes the labor on the tile. I spent off another $500 on the tile itself. George and Ray and I came back for next trip. Uh, we put in the flooring. That was a click together life proof vinyl floor. We did real wood in the first cabin. Super expensive. I wasn't happy with it when it was done. Uh, this stuff, you know, it's vinyl. So I don't know, a cabin in the woods. 
um, but durability, ease of cleaning, something when you're renting, ease of installation, cost, and a lot of stuff going for it. After we put it in, I would never do anything but that. Uh, that stuff is awesome. It's so durable, uh, so quick to put in, and so easy to clean. Uh, that other stuff, I, I'm not sure on the real wood. I don't even know if I'd call it a compromise, you know, going to a vinyl floor in a cabin. It just worked really well. So uh, for that flooring, I had $1,800 cost in the flooring uh, and $300 for the install. Just for frame of reference, it cost about four times that much to put a wood floor in the other cabin. Much bigger, um, but just way more expensive. The ceiling wood that we put in uh, came from a place in Michigan, so the, the shipping was real reasonable. It's a white pine tongue and groove car siding. It has what they call blues in it, which makes these cool blue streaks in uh, tongue and groove. They call it an imperfection. I think it looks super cool. And I get that end matched and pre-finished, ready to go for about 800 bucks for the whole cabin ceiling. You can't lose with that. We hauled it down there. Ray and George and I put it in about $300 in labor. Um, I was able to put all the lights in as we went, so we got quite a bit of the electric trim the same day. And then we did our trim indoors. So the trim that we used is just construction grade, one by fours and one by sixes. We took it, put a 20 grit sandpaper and a right angle grinder, ground it to look like wear, distressed look, kind of like a horse had been rubbing on it or something. Why well, you have a horse in your house, but uh, it happens. So uh, we hit it all with 220 grit sandpaper to uh, ease out the damage that the grinder had done. Put a coat of matte finish on it, paint. Uh, one coat of paint, flat paint on it. Sanded that on the corners, kind of made it look distressed again. Glazed it with an antiquing, like an antiquing gel glaze. Let that dry, clear coat it, sand it, clear coat it again. A lot of work went into that trim, but the cost of the trim itself was relatively inexpensive and you're going to have to finish anything that you buy, whether it's just two coats of paint. I, I thought it was worth it, but I've got, let's see, where did that go? Trim and doors, $1,500 into the material itself and about $800 in labor to finish it and install it. The doors, I made one for the bathroom out of a new slab and made the jam. Uh, the other double door, because this is uh, ADA, so we want a little wider door. Uh, I used some salvage doors on that, kind of made the frame and, and finished them to match the trim. They turned out pretty cool. So as soon as we got a good grip on the inside, you know, I had been waiting for guys to show up for the septic. After doing some tests in there, what was there on the house originally uh, was abandoned, it was old. Uh, we decided to go with an all new system. So I spent $8,500 on a new set. It's a concrete tank, line from the house to the tank, from the tank to the field, distribution box, uh, laterals, and that includes a new water line from the street all the way up to the house for the supply. I think that was money well spent. I didn't think it was too uh, bad. We had to do a, a two tank system with a lift pump in it at the first cabin. That was about $12,000 and didn't include the water line. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. We had about two trips uh, where we were working on siding. So we did some corrugated metal around the bottom of the cabin, kind of a mix of some shakes and some lap siding. We did use cedar. Cedar was just ridiculously expensive. But with all of the siding, uh, the gutter materials, we did aluminum, soffit, and fascia brought the gutters and put them up ourselves. About $3,500 in material all in. Labor, $3,200. I don't even know how to gauge this. There's a lot of different materials that you could use that would affect that cost. But I think, you know, that's about $6,700 all in for a small cabin. That's quite a bit, but uh, you know, that's a lot of work. So um, let's see, trimming the plumbing. Uh, came back with my dad. Again, we put in that water system that was talking about in the basement and we hooked up all of the plumbing fixtures. So I've got $1,500, no, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing, $1,300 for the fixtures. So that's a faucet and sink in the bathroom. I bought a used farm sink for the kitchen, put a new faucet on it, shower base, toilet, and, and you know, shower mixer valves and things like that. Uh, all the things that you would have with the plumbing. Uh, that was about $1,300 in. Appliances, I had a used stove that I got out of a rental. Super cool, like a 50 stove. Uh, I'll try and put a picture of it in here, but uh, that stove, a little fridge, 
microwave, toaster, coffee maker, things like that, all of those appliances. I think about $1,200, even if you had to spend, you know, $400 on a fridge and $300 on a stove, you'd still be pretty good with that $1,200 number. Uh, furnishings inside, I've got $1,200, so that's going to be, you know, two mattresses, a box spring. Uh, I made a lot of stuff. End tables, headboards, lamps, coffee table, couch, bookshelf, we got a flip up mirror, some things like that. Uh, you know, I had some stuff at home. You could buy it new, you could buy it whatever, it's sort of hard to say. I put $1,500 in for decor. So this would be like curtains, pictures, knickknacks, rugs. Uh, some pillows, blankets, you know, things like that uh, all over the place. They could probably be grouped in with furnishings, but I got about another $1,500 on that. Now I've got another one for contents. Again, this is probably part of furnishings. Uh, if you're starting to see a trend here, it, it's crazy how um, all of these things, like, like this content I'm calling, you know, fans for people to sleep with, dishes, pots and pans, uh, utensils, things like that. I've got $1,800 in uh, for that. Washer and dryer, I don't need to put that under appliances, whatever you want, but I've got almost as much into uh, furnishing and, and decorating and the, the appliances and things like that as the entire HVAC system. Uh, but I put another $1,800 in for that. Uh, finished stone, we had the driveway all restoned and graded and we got done with some smaller stone to dress it up. Uh, I had another $1,400 into that. Uh, and then this cabin, if you've been following the build, is wheelchair accessible. So we've got a ramp in there, some wider doors, things like that. So I had a concrete landing pad poured at the top of the driveway. So someone were to come in with a van and need to get a wheelchair in and out, uh, they could kind of swing into the side, unload their wheelchair, and then get onto the ramp and into the house from there. These prices don't include anything for fuel and food. I was bringing two trucks, sometimes three, 500 miles, trailers, bringing a lot of material. We'd have a lot of guys for a lot of days. So it did start to add up. So if you are paying people to help you, if you are driving far like we did, we'd drive 500 miles each way, that starts to add up, you know, it becomes a significant expense. Allow something in your budget for that. And I think another thing, when we start thinking about like subbing out drywall, when you think, well, it's only like $500, worth of drywall. Well then I gotta go get it. If I'm driving 500 miles to go there and hang a tape drywall and pay someone to help me, it started to become more expensive to do it ourselves than it would be to hire it out because I'm paying for labor and accommodations for guys to come and help me. So something to keep in mind. Let's look at this grand total. So when I add everything up here and I'm banking on none of you doing it that fast, I've got $117,500. It's probably wrong. I'll add it back up when I edit it here, but we take out $35,000 for the lot. That's gonna be a variable that differs for all of you because who knows what you're paying for it, uh, especially if you're putting it on property you already own. Uh, maybe you've got something more expensive, less expensive. We'll take out what I paid for it. And I've got about $20,000, I'm gonna say, in, in uh, labor that you could save by doing the work yourself. You know, some of it you can if you're not a septic guy, whatever. It's sort of hard to separate it because, of, you know, like the $8,500 I paid for septic was labor and material. But I'm gonna say about $20,000. So that leaves just over $62,500, right at $62,500 was total cost to remodel this cabin. Now keep in mind, we didn't build it new, but really all that we saved was the foundation um, and a lot of the exterior uh, walls and the roof structure. So really, I think if you were going to do like we did on the first cabin and maybe build a cabin on piers, uh, you didn't have to pour concrete in the crawl space like we did. That's about a, a wash if you were doing piers or pouring it in the basement. And you wouldn't have to, all the, the labor and disposal costs of doing the demo work. We could probably have framed that cabin in the same amount of time with a pile of lumber that cost darn near as much as it cost uh, to pay for the dump fees. So I'm gonna say, you know, if you're 62.5 to frame that cabin, do all the work that we did, Maybe call it 65,000, 75,000 if you're a little bigger. Uh, 
you know, but yeah, I think in that $65,000 range, you could build that cabin, you know, from the floor up, uh, depending on what, you know, if you wanted a basement under it, that would be a lot different. So hopefully these numbers help. I think they'll all be, uh, you know, different by the time most people watch this video because it changes every five minutes. But leave in the comments below what you guys are working on uh, or if this is helpful for you. If you have intentions to build your own cabin, that's awesome. Uh, the email is in the description below. I love seeing pictures. I'd like to put them in some future videos if you got stuff you're working on. Uh, but let me know what you got into your cabin. Maybe uh, you guys got twice this money. Maybe you did all yourself and you got half as much. Uh, I'd be interested to see and I think the other people below uh, would as well. On our third build here that we're doing now, I'm going to try and keep track of the expense uh, in the description as we go each video. So be sure and watch those and uh, hopefully we'll see you there too.